everybody, we're going to start building the TTO2 Type SR today. Before I do that, I want to go over what I have um, already purchased that is required for this kit. First thing, you're going to need a body. I've picked out a Tamiya 190mm uh, touring car body. And you, you're going to need tires, rubber tires. This kit does come with wheels, but you need to buy your own tires. You're going to need a steering servo, ESC, electronic speed control, a motor, transmitter receiver, a battery, a charger. In my case, since I'm running a LiPo battery, I bought a LiPo alarm also. If you want to understand a little bit about um, the LiPo battery and the ESC, there's another video that I'm going to put a link below that you can uh, learn a little bit more before you get started. The tools you're going to need for this particular kit, hallelujah, is a 2 millimeter hex wrench. You don't need a screwdriver. I think actually the manual does say you need a screwdriver, but I'll find it when I need it. Um, I think in the future, even for this step, I think there's a small pin that if you can't handle with your fingers, you may need a pair of a tweezers. And you need a pair of flush cutters to take the parts off the parts trees. And you might need a hobby knife. All right. So get that out of the way. One of the things I want to do also, I'm going to bring over the TTO2 regular manual and compare it to the SR. So the for today, we're going to be building the drive shaft, and you can see step one, two, and three is essentially building, assembling the drive shaft. And I have here a regular TTO2 manual, and their first step is basically determine what wheelbase based on the body that you've picked out. But two, three, as you can see, is very, very similar. And step five. So they're basically just a step ahead of the, uh, one more step ahead of the Type SR manual. So good to see basically the SR is still very similar right off the start to the regular TTO2 in case you're curious. So let me adjust the camera and we'll get started. Okay, I zoomed in a little bit here. So we can look at the left side of the manual. And this is always a spot where you wanna check out first. So we're going to be looking for this pin, and that should be in the A bag. This this bearing should also be in the A bag. That piece right there, I think, is GB5 is that. Should be in the B bag. That gear should also be in the B bag. And for step two, we're looking for GB1, and they tell you how to distinguish between GB1 and GB4. That's important to note. Um, here's another bearing, and then there you use the GB4. And there's a note here that says insert fully. So we just need to pay attention to these things as we're building. Align with the groove. Um, that's the pin I was talking about. And this comes standard with the 72 spur gear. And for this video series, what I'm going to do is just build everything stock right out of the box. I'm not going to make any modifications to it, upgrades to it, until maybe later. Um, maybe after the series is over. I want to build this as it comes out of the box so you can follow along. And then on this side, uh, you're using that screw, hex wrench, and it tells you to put grease on both sides and the gear. So that's that. So let me look for the parts and I'll show you where they are. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and first gripe about the Mia kits for a second here. This is all the parts that I needed to find, all the bags that I needed to find, just for the first four steps of, of the kit. Um, I needed the chassis, I needed this, part right there from the the letter D parts tree. I needed this bag. I need quite a few parts from this bag. The spur gear and uh, some of the bevel gears in here. That's the G bag. 
I need that and I also need the drive shaft. I need to open this bag just to get that grease out. And I think some parts are in here as well. I think the bearings are in here and perhaps the pins are in here. And if you've ever built a kit from another manufacturer, TLR, Team Associated, Traxxas, whatever kit, um, Axial, Element, RC, whatever kit that you've ever built before, you would probably know that other manufacturers organize their parts based on the steps. Um, for example, if we're building the drive shaft, they would have one bag and have all the parts in it. And that's the way it should be. I think that makes things a little bit easier. I realize TTO2 is an older chassis. I realize um, Tamiya has been doing this for 30, 40 years now. And maybe some of the higher end uh, chassis kits are put together a little bit differently. But as for these TTO2, even in this variant, nothing's changed. You have to go digging for parts and open basically several bags just to get all the parts that you need. So that's my gripe, got that out of the way. Let's get started. Okay, let's talk about step one. Step one is to charge the battery pack. And this is kind of funny to me. Um, back in the day when I had only the nickel metal high drive battery and the trickle charger, it would literally take eight hours to charge a battery. Um, hopefully you have a better charger or using different light batteries, but regardless, they figured you're going to build this kit on one sitting and it's going to take eight hours to charge your battery pack. But it's 2020, most likely you're not going to be using, you know, a trickle charger. And I usually don't build these kits in one sitting, even if it's not a, you know, difficult kit. I usually just like to take my time. So anyway, that's step one. Follow the instructions of your battery and your charger carefully and uh, go ahead and do that. I'm just going to charge my battery when the car is done. All right. Um, we've already went through the left hand side here. So we need to find this pin, a bearing, a GB5 spur gear stopper, and a GB1 bevel pinion gear. All right. Let me get all those together like magic. All right. I thought I had all the parts in front of me, but I had to go looking for another extra bevel gear. So this was one bag right here. And if you look at this gear, you can tell that this is actually GB4 and not GB1. So I had to go looking for GB1. And there's a supplemental bag where there's an extra diff case. And it was there. So let me take that out. You can see that is GB1 according to the manual. So let me start putting some of these things aside that I don't need. Go ahead and trim this off. See if you have a flush cutter, you most likely don't need a hobby knife. That looks pretty good. I have the bearings right here. And I believe it's these ones. These are the MA7s, yes. And I need two of those. Set that aside. And I need the pin, which are in this little bag right here with the rubber band. Actually, that's a uh, diff gasket. Looks like a rubber band there. Wondering why you need a rubber band and a RC kit. All right, here we go. Let me grab one of those pins here. Only need one. Okay. All right, we need this shaft right here. Let's trim that off. First thing you need to do is put the bearing through that, and you need that piece through there. 
and exposes that hole there. And we need that pin. This pin is what's going to turn the spur gear. It notches into the spur gear from this end. So you notice there's a notch there. This side it doesn't. And make sure the pin slides all the way through. And the and it's flush against the spur gear. Okay. Then another bearing and GB1. Let's make sure GB1 is the one with the circular indentations. All right, here we go. So we turn that so it indexes correctly. That was simple. That was step two. And put that aside. Let's see. Next part, we're going to need the other one, and we're going to need the drive shaft. Okay. Okay, I got them all here. You're going to need another two, another two bearings. One right there, and you need to get GB4. Let me get another two bearings. Those smaller ones in the back. Okay. So this time we're going to put both bearings on one side. And the gear. Just like so. With the drive shaft. And the spur gear assembly on the other end. That was step three. Now we're going to move over to step four. And let me bring over the chassis and open the, get the grease out of the bag as well. Take a look at the chassis real quick. I actually really like this chassis. Uh, it is not the bright blue that the TTO2RR comes in, but this is a harder, stiffer chassis. So somebody, when you pick up your car, people can't just tell which chassis you have just by looking at it, which is something I appreciate. Um, but this is, I mean, compared to a carbon fiber or aluminum chassis, this is quite heavy. But that's a TTO2 for you. So... All we're going to do is drop this assembly. I believe it's the other direction. I believe, nope, I had it right. I believe this way, the spur gear goes into this well and make sure this bearing indexes into that. And in the front, you have to separate the two bearings and make sure they settle into those two wells make sure everything spins freely and it does and that goes there and I'm going to assume I'm going to deduce that these two screws are the ones that go into the right there let me do that first Let's see, it's a two millimeter, like I said, it's a two millimeter hex. And this is a lot better. These screws are a lot better quality than the Phillips head screws. You can use a driver for this, an electric driver for this. For my purposes, for now, I'm just going to use my regular driver in case you don't have an electric one it is possible okay
by the way they call this the propeller shaft not a drive shaft in the manual you'll find that everything um, Tamiya does or whatever they translate it usually is a little bit different from uh, other kits that you might find so it also asks you grease all the gears here spray gear and there they don't call this a chassis they call this a deck so i don't have anything else to puncture this except my uh tweezers and that was easy enough I made a small hole and i'm just going to grease this liberally actually normally i would not do this at this time i would actually do this near the end when I'm just about to close up the diff and the spray gear. But like I mentioned before, I want to build this exactly the way you would out of the box. And the reason I would do it later is, so if I don't, if I accidentally bump up against it, I'm not gonna get grease everywhere, but it's okay. I'm gonna follow the manual to a T. Alrighty. Once you have the pinion gear in here and the motor running, it will uh, spread that out a little bit. All right, that's it. Okay, and with that, we've completed step one, two, three, and four. If your trickle charger is charging a battery, make sure it doesn't get out of hand and uh, overcharge your battery. And so let's look, take a look at the next steps and what the next video will be about. We're gonna be building one of my favorite things, which is the differential gears. And the front is actually really simple because it has the, uh, the locking block. And we're going to put that into place. And then we're actually going to build a real diff in the rear. I'm going to figure out how to do that, including filling it with diff fluid and then mounting it into the chassis. So with that, I hope this video helped you, guided you through the first four steps of the Tamiya TTO2 Type SR kit. If you like this video, you like the series, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.